Hi everyone. In this video, we will briefly review the materials from Calculus A. And we will focus on chapter four, definite integral. Here is the notation for the definite integral where we see A and B, these are the lower and upper limit. And Fx is the integrand term and dx is denotes the variable, all right? So first we will briefly introduce the definition and then we review several methods for the actual calculations. Finally, there will be several examples provided. This is the pictures illustrates the geometric meaning of the definite integral of fx from a to b. We see the curve and um, the geometric meaning of this definite integral is the area between the curve and the s axis. All right. Now, uh, actually, there is an approximation method which follows the four step procedure. The first one is subdivide. We divide the interval AB into many pieces. In each piece, we try to approximate the area using a simple formula. For example, the area of the rectangular as shown in the pictures here. The next step is to add up the local contributions. All right? So we can consider this is the sum of many local rectangular rectangular area. Finally, we need to take the limit. That means we wanted to increase the number of the subintervals between A and B. And this is an infinite process, right? When you take n goes to infinity, if n denotes the number of the subintervals appears in this interval, all right? In terms of the mathematical notation, we call this one to be the Riemann sum. Sigma no summation k from one to n, f of x star k, and then delta x, where delta x denotes the length of each subintegral. Okay. All right. And then the definite integral fx between a to b, this is defined as the limit of this particular Riemann sum. Notice that the choice of x k star, uh, there are many flexibility. Uh, Flexibility, we can choose this one to be left endpoint, right endpoint, and even the midpoint. Okay, this is the definition. Now, regarding the calculations, obviously we can follow the defi definition approach, but this requires us to calculate a limit, which is in general will be more difficult. All right, there are also some algebra properties, which means if we already knew the definite integral of a certain function, then maybe we can uh, add them, group them together. A right. uh, more formal way to do is to use the formula, something like uh, the definite integral of x squared from zero to one. And since the integral and the x squared power function, the antiderivative we need to raise is by one order and adjust the coefficient, which is one over three. And then this one is value at upper and the low limit. This means one third, one cubic minus one third, zero cubic. Finally, the answer will be one third, okay? More generally, this one is the so-called fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. That means this one, can be computed as capital FB minus capital evaluated at A. And we call the function Fx, capital Fx to be the antiderivative of the function F, okay? Okay, right now we will see several examples. The first one will be this one, one to two, two x squared plus three and a dx. Indeed, we can separate this one as two terms. The first one, two is a constant we can take out 
and x squared, the antiderivative will be one over three x cubed minus one divided at two and one plus the second term where the antiderivative will be three times x evaluate at two and one, right? So we can su substitute the numbers in and we will, should be able to obtain the answer from here. Second example. Consider this the integral from negative pi to pi sine of x and then dx. The antiderivative for this one is also available, which will be cosine of x. However, we need to reverse the sign. Again, evaluate at upper and the lower limit. This means negative cosine of pi minus of negative cosine of negative pi. All right, cosine pi will be negative one. Similarly, cosine negative pi also equal to negative one. All right, so this will give us one plus one equal to two, okay? All right, so this is a very short uh, review of the definite integral. I will strongly suggest you to review the materials in the textbook and let me know if you have any question. So from uh, so from this semester, we will actually learn a more advanced technique to calculate the indefinite and the definite integrals.